Yo, what's going on YouTubers? Plumpy Man here. Uh, just doing another little video like I usually do. And today, I'm actually doing a VR. Uh, I'm trying to get in this giveaway. The uh, dude I know on YouTube, uh, Pops Quest. Super awesome guy. Uh, he does some really cool woodwork. Great channel. Um, I like watching his stuff on Farmageddon. I like watching his stuff on cooking. Definitely like his uh, mag loaders. He makes some really cool mag loaders for uh, ARs and AK-47 and stuff like that. Well, he's got a 5K giveaway. He just had one here a while back. Um, and he did a giveaway not too long ago for AR guys. Which, a lot of you guys know, I have quite a few ARs. and uh, But, hey, this one's for AK. He's doing it for AK. Pops Quest 5K giveaway for you, your AK-47. And he wants us to show off our AKs, and that's what I plan on doing. Uh, I know you guys have seen this uh, this pretty beast right here more than once. And uh, this is my Egyptian Mahdi. And a little story behind it. Uh, this is the first mm, type, big type rifle that I ever bought myself. <coughs> well, technically not. It was first was an SKS, but when I grew up um, here in Indiana, you didn't buy guns or you didn't have guns unless you were, they they brought food on the table pretty much like a 22, a 12 gauge or um, slug gun, something like that, or a muzzle loader. Uh, There's just no point. I grew up kind of poor, and uh, you just didn't buy guns. There was no point in having a gun if it didn't serve a purpose in your life, like it didn't bring dinner or something like that. Growing up. Um, my dad was the same way, him growing up. Uh, pretty much when he was a kid, if they didn't grow it in the garden or they didn't shoot it, they wasn't eating. That's that's how they ate. They didn't go to the store. They couldn't afford stuff like that. Um, and me growing up younger, that's kind of how it was. It wasn't quite that bad, but you didn't have rifles or anything like that just for fun. Just go shooting and plinking. That just wasn't an option. Um, you conserved your ammo. You kept it for hunting rabbits, squirrel. Uh, deer, turkey, whatever, coons even, um, but that's just how it was, and I first got into it, I thought it was, I thought rifles were just a waste of time when I was younger, real young, and, uh, I got into prepping, when I got out of high school and started learning about reading and getting into stuff and, uh, learning stuff that I didn't know, and just about how the world really is, um, and, when I woke up and I started prepping, I won't go into full detail, but when I actually woke up, and if someone asks you, hey, are, are you awake, and you don't know what you're ta they're talking about, then you're still asleep. But uh, my first gun was from a friend. I was getting into prepping. I started stocking food and uh, radios, ham radios, stuff like that, um, communications, uh, guns. I started with pistols, and I wanted a good cheaper rifle because I didn't have much money and my friend talked me into getting an SKS so I picked up an old uh, Chinese Norinco SKS and I wanted one of these when I first started learning about it I wanted an AK but I couldn't afford it and uh, just that's just how well I didn't have that much money but I had that and I talked to a guy that my brother knew from his work and he had this gun this was this was had an old beat up wood stock and stuff, the old thumb hole stock, it just looked like crap. I didn't like it. And uh, I talked him into, uh, I sold my SKS that I got. My buddy gave me a heck of a deal, it actually made him mad. But I wanted one of these, I mean, for close combat. And I mean, honestly, I thought about here in Indiana, when you do, uh, if you're gonna do any kind of shooting or anything like that, or if it comes, crap hits a fan and you need to get down and dirty, you're not going to be shooting over 100 yards. You're just really not. Not here in Indiana. You're not. I mean, you can go out some places in the fields and stuff, and you can, but around the city and where I live and different parts, even where I hunt, you're not going to have too many shots over 100 yards that's, unless you're hunting on a field. That's just all there is to it. And for indoor combat and for knockdown power, I wanted something that was just going to do them dirty. Do it dirty. And that's why I picked an AK 47 over like a. A 223 rounder, a 556, and an AR. Um, it was the first gun I got was a 762 by 39. It was SKS, but I traded it because I wanted this. Um, easier to maneuver. You put the collapsible stock um, in the house, outside the house, whatever. And this thing within 100 yards, uh, 
or closer, it's going to be, I'm going to hit it every time. And I actually seen some guys um, when I was younger shooting ARs and stuff like that and shooting SKSs and AKs um, at steel barrel, 55 gallon steel barrels. If you guys have ever been around them or done it, try shooting a steel barrel with an AR. Then shoot it with an AK and tell me the results. I know the results because I've done it. And again, that's why I chose this. Um, it's got some pretty mean, aggressive bullets. A lot different than a AR. As you can see, um, this is loaded. I keep it loaded at all times. I do not keep one in the chamber most of the time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just chose this just for the knockdown power and the firepower. And uh, the SKS I had had 10 rounds. Well, I'm sporting 30 rounds in that. And, I mean, it's just this thing if you're... All these countries around the world, man, are not wrong when it comes to these guns. I mean, look at Russia, look at China, look at Egypt, look at uh, Romania, look at Yugoslavia. I mean, there's so many countries. This gun still prevails there every day. I mean, you could run over this with a truck and it'll still work. Now, I know some people say that ARs nowadays are just as good and blah 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 but you can sit and drive freaking gravel and sand inside this while you're functioning it and pulling the trigger and it'll still shoot you can bury it do whatever now you bury an AR-15 or you start dropping sand and gravel and stuff inside the chamber one of those and it will hang up I'm, I'm just telling you no matter what they're not going to take as much abuse as one of these will um, I know I'm kind of rambling but uh, I wanted to tell you my opinion and why I want an, wanted an AK and over an AR to begin with and all that. And then later on, um, I started getting into the ARs just because something to do and build the guns myself. But every AR I got, except maybe one, I pretty much put together and built myself. But uh, when I bought this one, the dog was going nuts. Um, I took it apart and put this uh, Tapco stock on it made it nine, uh, 922R compliant and stuff. Put Tapco trigger and all that. And I did it all myself, put a Tapco, uh, or I can't remember what that's even called, Tapco Dragon or something, uh, flash hider there. Um, and I actually tied this myself. Um, but honestly, to tell you the honest truth, I own five AR-15s. I own a pistol and four just full-size ARs. Uh, some of them are more expensive than the others. And if I knew I was going to get into a gunfight or need something that I was going to rely on, no joke every time i've told all my friends this i tell my brother my mom dad all of them if i get if i need something that i'm going to take with me this be the first gun i grab it it will go on my shoulder and my backpack my bug out bag's already got ammo for it in it um i'll leave the ars lay every time and that's the reason i have four or five ar-15s too is because my goal was um my brother my sister my mom and dad, they're not, they're into guns, but they're not that big into it. And I wanted to have a gun for each member of my family if need be when something hits the fan or something happens. But still again, every time, this would be the gun I grab. My Egyptian Mahdi AK-47. Um, I love this gun. It's been reliable over the years. I picked this gun up off a buddy of my brother's. Uh, at the time, I traded an SKS and... I pretty much sold an SKS that I bought off a friend that I got a good deal on and I pretty much purchased this with the money so it didn't really cost me that much more I got about 200 bucks in this gun well 300 after putting the Tapco stock on it and that was quite a few years ago but anyway this is my go-to gun I love it you can ask anybody that knows me um, I love AKs <laughs> but I just honestly at the time AKs are kind of expensive if you go like even now they're still seven eight hundred dollars where well, you can build an AR for about five hundred so that's kind of why and but anyway if I had to if I had to go to a SHTF scenario this would be the first one I grab and like I said all those countries aren't wrong Russia China Egypt uh, Yugo uh, Japan all of them AKs I mean they're still in Africa it's easier to get an AK 47 than it is a sandwich in some parts of that country just saying. Yo, just to clarify the 200 bucks thing on this rifle, technically what I did is my buddy sold me an SKS for 200 bucks. I turned around and cleaned it up and sold it for $400 cash. 
I took that cash and purchased this rifle off my buddy, uh, my brother's buddy, and uh, that's how I did it. So technically, I was only in at about 200. I just took the profit that I made off the other and bought it. And then later on, as you see, I put this Tapco stuff on it. I cleaned it up, put Tapco, made it 922R compliant, and added some other things like the Magpul mags and stuff and whatever. But and the Tapco high flash hider and stuff like that. But that's it. That's how I did it. Just wanted to clarify that. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks.